Hi guys, my name's Daniel, Product Evangelist at Zend, and in this video I'm going to show you how to manage and create virtual hosts in Zen Server. Zen Server gives you the flexibility you need when deploying multiple applications on your server, by allowing you to create and manage virtual hosts either on Apache or Nginx web servers, and with SSL security if needed. If you're working in a clustered environment, new virtual hosts are added across the board on all the servers in the cluster while existing virtual hosts are added to the new members in the cluster. ZenServer validates the consistency and integrity of the virtual hosts at all time and on the entire cluster. ZenServer will also identify pre-existing virtual hosts and will alert you if there are any consistency issues. If you want to deploy an app on a predefined virtual host that's not a problem, you can enable deployment on these virtual hosts and Bob's your uncle. All the virtual host management actions you're going to see in this video can also be performed using Web API. So you've got the option to fully automate application deployment in Zen Server. So let's get started. Managing and creating virtual hosts in Zen Server is done on the virtual hosts page under applications. All pre-existing and Zen Server defined virtual hosts are listed in a list. These icons in the properties column give you important info on whether you can deploy apps on the virtual host and on whether the virtual host is SSL secured or not. The Actions column on the right contains all the action items available for managing your virtual hosts in Zen Server. If you select a virtual host from the list, you get additional information, such as the virtual host type, the time and date the virtual host was created, and SSL security details. The configuration template is the template Zen Server uses for creating virtual hosts, and it contains various vhost configuration directives. We'll get back to that later. The other information tabs in the expanded view give me the servers in the cluster and applications deployed on the virtual host. Right, so the first thing we're going to do is create a new virtual host. So I'm going to click the Add Virtual Host button in the action bar. And we get the Add Virtual Host wizard. So first I'm going to fill in the virtual host's name and then the port it listens on. In the next dialog, I've got the option to use SSL security for the new virtual host. And to do this, I'm going to select the Enable SSL Security option. Then, I'm going to add the file paths to an existing SSL certificate. First, the path to the certificate file, then the path to the key file. Now, if you're using an intermediate SSL certificate, you'll also need to add the path to the certificate chain file. OK, so I'm going to click Next. Zen Server validates the SSL files and continues on to the template dialog. So like I said before, the virtual host configuration template is created by Zen Server. And it's basically a general design of your virtual host. It contains all the virtual host configuration directives such as the virtual host name and port and its document root. For your new virtual host, you can either use the provided default template or edit it according to your requirements. In this case, I'm making sure our web server listens on port 445. Now the process of editing the configuration template is extremely delicate and it can easily disrupt the operation of your web server. So it should be performed only by those feeling they know exactly what they're doing. In any case, if ZenServe identifies a configuration error, it'll give you a chance to fix it. So for example, let's purposely trigger an error here by entering a bad include path. Let's see what we get. ZenServer's validation suspects a configuration error. It can't be certain of it since it has limited system permissions. So you can ignore the error message and carry on with creating the vhost, or go back, fix the error, and revalidate the template. The final dialog in the wizard is a summary of the process, which we'll just review, and then hit Finish to create our new virtual host. Great, Zen Server's stored the new virtual host. Now there's no need to change our PHP runtime yet, so we're not going to restart Zen Server. But what we are going to do is deploy an application on our new virtual host. So let's go to the Manage Apps page. 
and click the deploy application button in the action bar. We need to now upload the Joomla ZPK and continue on with the deployment process. Now on the application details page, after entering a display name for the application, in the virtual host drop down menu, I'm going to select the new virtual host we just created. Now I'm going to enter a path for the application and quickly go through the rest of the deployment stages. All right. Let's take a closer look. We can see our Joomla app deployed on the new virtual host with SSL security enabled. Now, how do we deploy an application on a pre-existing virtual host, what we called a system-defined virtual host? No problem. All we have to do is enable deployment for this virtual host. And to do this, you need to click the Enable Deployment button in the Actions column on the right and follow the instructions that pop up. Because that server doesn't have certain write permissions, what you have to do is add some lines of code to your web server's configuration file. Once this is done, Zenserver will automatically identify these changes and update the virtual host information in the list. What else? Virtual hosts can also be edited, so you can easily change the SSL certificate or the configuration template. Likewise, in case of a configuration inconsistency, virtual hosts can be redeployed or removed. Okay, that's it for now, guys. Thanks for watching. If you're looking for more info on virtual hosts and deployment in Zen Server, check out the online docs on www.zen.com.